Hey, it's Tim here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be doing something slightly different. One of the most common bits of feedback I've been receiving in my comments is that most of my demos are done using uh, Excel. And essentially I'm connecting Tableau or Tableau Prep directly to Excel files. And that doesn't simulate the experiences that most people have in their businesses. So what I'm doing in this video is I'm actually gonna show you the setup for a Postgres database that I'm gonna be using in the videos in the future. Um, instead of just setting it up, I thought I'd make a video out of it and show you how you can do the same thing. I'm also gonna be referencing this video in future videos if you wanna set up a database for yourself so you can follow along. Okay, let's get stuck in. So the first question we need to answer is why Postgres? Well, um, there's not really that much logic to it. It's just something that I've, I guess I'm, I'm more common with and I see more often in, in terms of day-to-day -day usage. Uh, if I head over to the Amazon website here, they have a page on the relational databases that um, they have available. And they have a list here. This is pretty much a universal list of the key databases that are used in enterprise sort of setups. Obviously they have their own Amazon Aurora, which is kind of like a, a hybrid uh, uh, relational database in some senses. But there's obviously Postgres, MySQL, MariaDB, MariaDB, Oracle, and SQL Server. Now, um, one of the reasons I'm gravitating toward Postgres is simply because it's open source. Uh, MySQL is also open source, and I'm sure all the others have like developer versions, so you don't actually need to sort of pay to have them running on your desktop. But the key thing is um, Postgres just comes up again and again in lots of uh, enterprise uh, instances that I, I come across. So I just thought, let's set something up that's as close to something that's actually gonna be used in real life. And I also know in terms of Tableau, it's got really good spatial support. So you can install um, a spatial sort of plugin so you can have a database with spatial objects in there as well. Uh, so we're gonna go through the setup of installing all of this. Um, slightly longer video than normal, but let's get stuck in. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to go to the Postgres website, postgressql.org. And essentially, um, I don't normally click on the download button on the homepage because this typically sends you to the enterprise solution, which is not what you want to do. Um, you want to get the free version. So let's head on to the download page here at the top. And you obviously want to pick the right thing for your platform. Now, I'm doing this video for Windows as per the title of the video. I will maybe do a video for the Mac as well. So if you want to see that in the future, drop a comment down below. And I'm gonna hit Windows uh, as an option there. Now, it's important to know which version you're installing. Now, because I'm just gonna be using Tableau or Tableau Prep on my laptop or on my desktop, it doesn't actually really matter. I don't have to worry too much about compatibility unless I start trying to connect to it from elsewhere. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install version 12. So if I hit download the installer, it takes me to this page, which is hosted on uh, enterprisedb.com. And you just go ahead and install the latest version, which in this case is 12.4. Uh, go ahead, download that. That will obviously kick off the download. In this case, I'm gonna save it to my desktop. And uh, you'll actually see I've already got this file on my desktop here. So you'll see this, I've got this unconfirmed download over here because I've already got the file uh, here on the top left um, of my window. Now, once you have the file on your desktop, it's time to run the install. And it's important to bear in mind a couple of things. Now, when you set this up, you're gonna need a few bits of information to hand. Uh, first of all, your Windows username and password. We're gonna need this a little later on to set things up. And secondly, it's good to have your password manager open because you're gonna to need to write down certain passwords because you don't wanna forget these because honestly, this, the quickest way to reset these is just to install it again. Um, so uh, remember to note these things down as we go through the install so you know what they are in the future. Let's go ahead and double click the installer. I'm gonna delete this one. You can see it's a duplicate. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's double click the installer and minimize the browser window. So you can see here, it's opened up the installer. I'm just gonna go ahead and click next. And you obviously get a little sort of uh, interface to ask you what components to install. They're all ticked. So go ahead and click next. Click next. Um, and it will actually kick off the install. Uh, it'll give you a list of what it's about to install. And when that's done, uh, you can basically just, uh, you know, let that run. Uh, please ensure PG Admin server is shut down before proceeding. I actually have PG Admin running somewhere. I think it is shut down. Um, I'm pretty sure it's shut down. So uh, there we go. So I had this installed earlier on and I uninstalled it just for this video and then I'm installing it again um, to make sure everything works. So let's just let this finish. 
Okay, I'm back and we're nearly at the end of the install. I'm just going to let this uh, last uh, step finish and then we're pretty much ready to go ahead and start trying to figure out how to set this up. Okay, so we're pretty much done. If I look at the uh, instructions here, completing the PostgreSQL setup wizard. Uh, setup is finished, installed on the PostgreSQL on your computer, launch stack builder at exit. So this is basically the next step. The stack builder essentially allows you to build your Postgres environment. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let's hit finish. And you can see stack builders launched almost straight away. Now, the key thing here is obviously we're going to choose a database type. And I previously had Postgres 9.4 installed on this. And I've also had Postgres 12 previously installed. So it's actually picked that up uh, directly here. So I'm going to go ahead and select Postgres 12 in this particular case. Then I'm going to hit next. Now, if you want to install any plugins, you can go ahead and select them from this list. There's, there's various categories. And if I expand one of these, you'll see these are some sort of add-ons that can be added on. Now, the only one I'm actually interested in is a spatial one uh, because Tableau has some spatial objects uh, capability. So I want to be able to connect to a database and see uh, that functionality. So I'll install that. Um, in terms of everything else, uh, you don't really need it. I'm not going to be doing any anything else. And you can always come back here and install these in the future. You don't have to do this uh, when you launch. It's obviously easier when you do it here, but um, you can do this later. So just go ahead and hit next. And then uh, it obviously asks where to download these plugins because these plugins are not part of Postgres. They're sort of an add-on to Postgres. So go ahead, click next. Uh, click next and uh, you basically start the installation process for each of these bundles. So I've only got one here. I'm going to ask it to create a spatial database. So I'll have something there rather than uh, having to create something myself. Just allows you to make sure that everything's there. And then we can actually use this in Tableau to check that it's installed properly. So go ahead and hit next. Uh, it's going to ask for uh, the destination folder for this. And then it's going to ask for the password. Now, in my case, I actually had a master password before. Now, when you install Postgres for the very first time in your machine, it will ask you for a master password very early on. If you set that up, this is the same password that you basically need to use. So this is mine. Okay, I'm gonna hit next. And then obviously it's called uh, PostGIS sample. Um, I'm just gonna call this um, spatial underscore sample. So it's just a little bit easier and nicer to read. I'll use a lowercase s and hit install. Now we'll let that run. Okay, would you like to would you like us to register GDL data environment variable view needed for raster transformation to work properly? This will overwrite existing settings if you have them. Yes, um, these are obviously bundles that they're suggesting. Um, this one post uh, GIS enabled drivers to common drivers. Uh, these look like image drivers. I'm just gonna go ahead and click yes. Uh, enable out DB rasters environment needs to be set to one. Okay, yes. Um, it's always worth reading those. Sometimes they sneak in uh, an option to install like a bit of software into these things. So always read those things, make sure they're not sneaking something in. Uh, go ahead and hit close and that's it. We've pretty much finished the installation and we're now ready to basically set it up. If I, if I go to my start menu here and I go to the Postgres option, which is Postgres 12 here and hit PG admin for this will open up the uh, Postgres management tools. And it's important to go here just to make sure everything's running and everything's uh, working okay. So let me enter my master password. Uh, click okay. Uh, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So if I just expand this, uh, never save that, uh, Postgres 12, and it looks like everything's running great. If I go to schemas, um, you'll see that I actually potentially have a table here called Tableau Prep, which I created before. So it's kept my uh, data and my information from the previous installation. But now you can see this is, uh, this is there, it's running, it's ready to work. So if I open up uh, Tableau, I'll go ahead and open Tableau Prep at the same time, just so you can see that as well. Uh, and then here, if we just hit Postgres, you can see that it's got the sample that I previously connected to. I just need to enter my master password. Uh, actually, this is I didn't call this uh, PostGIS uh, 30. I called it something else. So let's just uh, double check that here. Let's see uh, what the database should be called. PostGIS sample. This is called spatial sample. So the old one is called that. 
but this one is called spatial sample. So let's go ahead and connect to that. Uh, the master password for your database. You can, of course, create alternate usernames and passwords, but I'll just go ahead and create the default one that I created when I set it up as the admin. And here we have it. We have Postgres running on our machine and we're ready to go. We can connect to these fields. We can uh, do what we typically do in Tableau, drag and drop, and we have these uh, wonderful uh, capabilities available to us. And the cool thing here is now that we have this, we can go ahead and actually start um, also investigating how databases work in the future. So um, whilst I'm doing all these things, in the background, you can see that my uh, Postgres database instance is obviously started to do things like transactions and it's loading and sort of logging what's going on. So I can obviously interrogate the SQL being run behind these. I'm not a Postgres expert, so I don't know where that is. That's gonna be a learning journey for me as well. Uh, but that's pretty much it. That's uh, pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, we're just gonna check that Tableau Prep can connect to it as well. Let me just close this, open up a previous workflow that are actually adapted already. Uh, and what we're gonna do is connect to a database table, select Postgres, uh, and this one, obviously, we're going to need to give it the database, so local host. Uh, and this one, the database is called uh, spatial underscore sample. And the username and, and password is, in this case, is Postgres and my master password. And go ahead, hit sign in. This might be the wrong password. Yes, I thought so, because I'm missing an exclamation mark. Hit sign in, and we're in. And so here we have the database. And we can, of course, connect to the spatial uh, sample, create another one, uh, just call it test. And we're just going to make sure that it's there, create a new table. We don't want it to append. We want it to replace the data every single time. Hit replace. I'll do another video to go through this in more detail. This is a new feature in 2020.3 uh, for Tableau Prep. I'm just going to hit run flow. And we should now have that database in our table. So let's go here to spatial samples, go to the schemas, go down to, oh, not the schemas actually. Is it the schemas? Yeah, it should be correct. Um, oh, why, why am I not seeing what I'm expecting here? Where, why have I gone wrong here? So hold on, Postgres, uh, schemas, yeah, public. Okay, so this is where I should go. Uh, I am in the right place. Schemas, uh, tables, and uh, there we are. There we have the table that we had in uh, in in uh, Tableau Prep, and you can see the fields there are available to us. And so we can actually go ahead, go full circle, uh, go ahead, uh, go back, go in here, just search test. Um, uh, see if if I hit search, this might refresh this connection. No, okay. So let's uh, click edit connection, click sign in. I'm hoping that refreshes this list, there we go. And then hopefully I can connect to that new table again. So I'll go ahead and remove this and uh, just by going out here, remove that. And then once that's gone, we can drag in the test table we just published in Tableau Prep just to test everything's working. And uh, it's not gonna be like lightning fast like a normal database, but we should have some information available to us here. So it's just put sales region, and then we can just put cells and there we have it. We have a working uh, database on our machine. We've uh, created it, we've tested it in Tableau, we've created some data in Tableau Prep, we've published that to the database, then we've connected to it again in Tableau. So that's pretty much it. Uh, we did that, uh, the recording here says 15 or so minutes. So hopefully that's been a useful video. Uh, follow along. If you've got any questions at all, uh, drop them in the comments below uh, and we'll try and address those in the future. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you the new feature in 2020.3 for Tableau Prep where you can write to databases. So stay tuned for that. And hopefully if you're using this video for one of my other tutorials, hopefully you find this helpful uh, for learning a little bit of SQL and how databases work. Okay, if you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. If you haven't, drop a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future. I'll catch you in the next one.